Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a point-to-point -point VPN connection between two Fedora servers using WireGuard. Before I dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video, as well as invite anyone who hasn't subscribed yet to click the subscribe button and ring the bell when you do, so you can be aware of when new content comes available. And also, if you enjoy the video or find it useful, make sure you click like and feel free to share it with others. So WireGuard is a VPN software that's actually baked into the Linux kernel. It is lightweight and highly performant, and I've been doing some um, experiments and such with it in my home lab, trying to do a, a remote access VPN as well as making a effectively a VPN gateway to where I can host some stuff in the home lab and have it exposed to the internet and so basically using like a VPS service to give myself a static IP address and using WireGuard to get the traffic from that VPS onto my home lab LAN. For this video, however, I'm just going to focus on creating a uh, point to point connection. This might be something that you use in a production environment if you're wanting to have that point to point VPN going using WireGuard. One thing I'm going to do that's a little different than some of the other tutorials you may see, I'm not going to use the WG Quick utility to make this VPN function. Using that is perfectly fine. There's, there's no reason to not use it. I just wanted to see if I can make this work with the built-in networking tools for Fedora, which would be Network Manager and NMCLI. So to get started, I'm going to create some terminal sessions into my WireGuard servers that are going to serve as both points on the point-to-point -point connection. I know I could do tabs, but I like having the windows. It makes it a little bit easier to visualize stuff. So we'll SSH into the first server. Do the same for the second server. I'm also going to go ahead and sudo into root, simply because I don't feel like prepending sudo to almost every command that I'll be doing. The first step is we need to install the WireGuard tools package, which will give us some um, user space commands that we'll use for generating our public and private key, as well as checking various things about WireGuard. You're going to see me doing some copying and pasting between the servers. Um, that's easier to do than typing out all the stuff. So after a few seconds, the WireGuard tools are complete. And now we're going to generate our public and private key. This is important because this is what WireGuard uses to encrypt and unencrypt the traffic for both ends of the peers. And also the key is used for routing. There's a lot of good documentation from WireGuard as far as how, how it works and this is quite interesting. The, they use something called crypto key routing, which basically is using um, your public key to, or rather the, WireGuard endpoint is using the public key to know which WireGuard interface to send traffic to. I'm not going to go into details about that, mainly I don't have it uh, memorized, but there's, there's a good bit of reading that you can do for that. So to make a private key, we can simply do WG gen key. That gives us a private key, but we also need a public key and you have to have a private key from which you would make your public key. So I could do WG gen key pipe that to WG pub key and that gives us a public key. However, this really isn't that useful because we don't know the private key that was used to make the public key. So a way to work with this, and there's probably other solutions, but I like using the T command. So I'll do WG gen key, pipe this to T, and what T is going to do is show a standard output as well as output the standard output to a file. So I'm just going to output it to a private dot key. There is no significance to the name of the file. You can make it be whatever you want. And since we're using T, that means there's still standard output that can be piped. I'm going to pipe to WG pub key and then output the public key to public dot key. So we have our two files there. We have our private key and we have our public key. The files themselves don't need to stick around because we're going to be putting these values in the interface configurations. But if you wanted to store them, I typically put them in Etsy WireGuard. And also I will set the permissions to either 600 or 400 to where others on the system wouldn't be able to view the files. 
So we'll do the same on the other server. So the next step is actually setting up the network interface for WireGuard. And again, for this, I'm going to be using NMCLI to make that happen. So we'll do NMCLI con add. The type is going to be WireGuard. The con name, connection name, I'm just going to call it WG0. The interface name, I also am going to call WG0. I typically like the connection names and interface names being the same. If I have you know, teams or bonds or such, obviously they'll, they'll be probably be different for that. But for this, I like keeping it the same. I'm also going to do auto connect no. You don't have to do this, but I have found every once in a while if I bring up a connection too early and I haven't got all the bits uh, configured yet, some problems can happen. That doesn't occur all the time, but just to be safe, I make sure that it's not going to auto connect until I am ready for this to occur. So it'll create the connection. And I'm going to copy paste this over to the other server and make its connection. Now we're going to configure the IP information. And these next few commands I'm going to do, you could do one big long NMCLI um, con mod or uh, connection modify command. But if you're following along and wanting to do this in your own lab, I'll do them as separate commands just to make it a little bit easier to follow. So nmcli con mod wg0. First, I'm going to set the IPv4 method. I'm going to set that to manual. I imagine you may be able to do DHCP with WireGuard off the top of my head. I'm not quite sure how that would work, but you're obviously free to experiment. We'll set our address to 10.0.0.1 slash 30. And again, WireGuard itself is going to be using its own little routing method. But in my opinion, it is a best practice to still give this valid, uh, give the interface a valid IP address and valid subnet. Because if you're doing something, for example, like the the gateway where traffic from the internet is coming to your VPS with WireGuard and you have your firewall and you're doing that and such and eventually that traffic comes to your uh, home lab or wherever it's going. You want to have um, valid routes and such so just go ahead and give it a valid IP address. Since this is going to be just a point-to-point -point connection I'm using slash 30 so that will give me effectively two usable IP addresses. We'll do the same thing on the other side, except obviously we'll do a different IP address. We'll give it number two. Next, we're going to associate the private key, or rather the, the WireGuard private key with the WireGuard interface. So NMCLI con mod WG0. We're going to do WireGuard dot private key. And you could simply copy paste the private key if you wanted to um, not see the private key when you're doing this command. You could do a subshell like this cat private key, and that will get what you want. One way is not better than the other, it's just a, a preference. Maybe you're at an actual terminal and you can't copy paste, that's a way of, of getting the private key in there. And then we're going to set the listening port. And for this, we're going to do 51820. You could, in theory, do any port that you want, but most of the tutorials you're going to see are going to be using 51820. Now, we still need to configure the peer information for WireGuard. And unfortunately, at least at the time of making this video, there are no NMCLI commands that we can use for that. So we're actually going to need to edit the network configuration file itself which isn't ideal, you know, we'd like to be able, just be able to do everything from NMCLI, but I don't think it's too terrible of a lift to have to do. So let's go to Etsy, Network Manager, System Connections, and we're going to VI the WG0 connection. So to configure a peer, we're going to add a block, and it's going to be WireGuard-Peer dot, and then whatever the public key is of your peer. So we'll cat the public key on this side, copy and paste that. And we need to set up two parameters within this WireGuard peer. The first is going to be endpoint. And this is the actual IP address, not the WireGuard interface, but the machine's IP address that WireGuard will be connecting to. We also need to tell it the port to use. And then we need to configure allowed IPs. 
I want to take a moment to talk about the allowed IPs because in my testing of WireGuard and learning about it, when I've had to troubleshoot stuff, a lot of times the issue comes down to allowed IPs is misconfigured. So what this is saying for WG1 here is traffic that is destined to leave or go out the WG1 interface, only traffic with a destination address of 10.0.0.2 is going to be allowed. Also, if traffic is coming into this interface, only traffic with the source address of 10.0.0.2 is going to be allowed. So this allowed IPs works both ways. It's checking the destination for traffic that's outbound or egress, and it's checking the source for traffic that's inbound or ingress. And while we're in here, we'll go ahead and set the auto connect to true because all of our configuration stuff is now here. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So let's CD Etsy Network Manager System Connections and we'll VI the WireGuard connection and set up the peer WireGuard-peer and we will get the public key so endpoint technically you might not need to do the endpoint on the other end because the when the connection first comes from WG01, it will it should discover what the endpoint is. But since this is a point-to-point -point connection, we are using you know known IP addresses, and these IP addresses are not changing. Then we'll go ahead and statically configure the endpoint. So we'll get the actual Ethernet IP address. It's also going to be listening on 51820. And again, the allowed IPs, this time it's going to be the 10.0.0.1 because from WireGuard 2, the traffic that will be leaving the interface should be addressed to 1 and then traffic coming in on the interface should be from 1. And again, we'll set the auto connect to true now. So now we need to load or rather reload the configuration for the interface. So we'll do nmcli con load and then this file nmcli con load and then the file so the interface is configured now it's time to bring up the WireGuard interface so we'll do nmcli con up wg0 we'll do that on the other side as well didn't see any errors there so that looks good and we can use the wg command this came from the WireGuard tools package show wg0 and we see our interface and its public key, the private key, is hidden. We see that it's listening on these ports, and we see that our peer has been configured. However, traffic is not going to pass. If I were to try to SSH to my peer, this is going to hang and eventually time out because we need to configure the local firewall to allow traffic on 51820. So we'll do that with the firewall command, firewall-cmd add port equals 51820 and this is UDP not TCP and we'll do permanent we could do it without the permanent and it would just work but we're wanting this to persist so we'll do permanent and we will reload the firewall we'll do the same on the other side as well sometimes I wonder if it would just have been faster to type it versus copy and paste All right, so our firewall's configured and reloaded, and let's try the SSH again. And there we go. Feed it the super secret password, and hostname, here I am on WG02. I can ping the other side, and we can get that. One thing I do want to mention, and I'm not sure how this happened. Maybe I'm, I'm misremembering, but when I was doing some tests, I had my interface is set up and I somehow became distracted and I'm fairly sure I did not configure the firewall yet I was able to ping between my my two um, nodes on the the wire guard address I couldn't SSH but I could ping and to this day I'm not sure how that was possible maybe I actually did have the the firewall done right I'm not sure or maybe I had something configured right on one and not on the other but just know that 
for your production environment using WireGuard, you're going to have to have the firewall configured. If you get a magical ping and you haven't done anything with the firewall, I would be very suspect about that. So now we're going to reboot just to make sure that this persists. So shut down dash R now. And that shut down WG2 because I was SSH'd into it. So shut down dash R now for WG1. We'll wait a few moments and let the VMs come back up and configure that they're still able to communicate over the WireGuard connection. All right, so I checked Invert Manager and they're both back up. Let's see if our WireGuard connection has persisted. So SSH, any admin into WG1, and SSH, Eddie admin into WG2. All right, let's see if we can ping the other WireGuard interface. Yep, so we have pings. Just to be thorough, ping from the other side, and this time we'll initiate will initiate the SSH connection from here. And we're in hostname WG1. So we now have a successful point-to-point -point VPN connection between two Fedora servers using WireGuard. Again, in the future I'll make some videos with some other use cases with uh, WireGuard since I've had to do them in my home lab. If you found this video useful and you enjoyed it, make sure you do click like. Also, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video and want to remind you, if you have not subscribed yet, make sure you do click that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be aware of when new videos come out. I'm trying to do about uh, two a month, so clicking that bell will let you know when they're available. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch, and I will see you the next time.